Get going. <laughs> Hello, forgive it. Hello. Hello. Oh, there's a lot of people here tonight. I'm really nervous now. Good. Um, time out real quick. Taylor. Okay. All right. Here we go. Um, so, there is so much pain and anguish uh, in our kids nowadays going through school. Um, and I always say to Paula, I just wish they could see beyond their own little world, their own little circumstances. Uh, and see the bigger picture outside of that, the world that's beyond high school and the drama that's associated with high school. Um, if only the kids would listen to my advice and, and my rules, because yeah. I've been there, I've been through it, and I know the extra pain that I put on myself by doing... Not listening to me. By not listening to my father, yes, thank you. And you put on your folks. Yes, so, so I just, I wish they would just listen and understand um, that if they just just follow that advice and that rules, and if they came to me when they had the issue, I could help them through it. And then, you know, they'd still have the pain. They'd still go through problems at school, because it is what it is. But they would have the tools then to at least be able to get through that stuff easier um, and come out the other end to something better. So that got me thinking. And I thought, I wonder if God feels the same way when he looks down at us. This world is so full of pain and anguish and so much stuff going on. And I think maybe God thinks to himself, I wish they could see outside of their own little world, outside of their current circumstances, and see the big picture. See what's to come after this life. And if only my children would follow my rules, and follow my advice and come to me when they need something. Um, love one another, forgive one another, help those less fortunate. Don't steal, don't covet, don't lie, control your anger, do away with sexual sin, not worry or be afraid, but trust God. Pray about everything. Do not idolize pro false prophets, like famous people, athletes, but love the Lord God with all of your heart. Life on earth is going to be difficult no matter what. We're going to go through trials and, and bad times, but if we have the tools of God in our belt, we are going to be able to withstand the temptations of the devil we're going to be able to overcome the obstacles in our way if we can just follow God's advice follow God's commandments God is the only way I've learned that and tonight I'm going to read a couple of things for you guys most of you I think my mouth is so dry most of you I think know my story um, but while I was going through some of the stuff that I went through, the part that people haven't heard about is that there's other people in my life that experience bad things as well. I have children that lost their mothers, and I have uh, family that dealt with the loss, and friends that dealt with the loss, and dealt with the stuff that we all went through. And so tonight, I got uh, a story uh, about my daughter and what she went through. And the first thing I'm going to read to you is my perspective of watching her go through this. And then Taylor actually wrote her own um, of how she felt going through all of this. Um, and uh, I told you all last week that Taylor got baptized, decided to get baptized. And so that's what kind of brought all this up. So if you bear with me just a little bit longer, here we go. This is my perspective. Taylor was born 12 weeks early on May 5th, 2005, 
After Sarah suffered major complications, Taylor weighed two pounds, four ounces. She was an absolute miracle. She was on oxygen for only a couple hours. The nurses were astonished. They said she was like a full-term baby in a little tiny body. She spent two months in the NICU growing bigger, but never had any complications or other issues, no health issues and no developmental issues that are often associated with a baby being so premature and small. Taylor was such a happy baby and child. Taylor and Sarah were inseparable. Then in early 2011, when Taylor was just five years old, Sarah was diagnosed with breast cancer. Sarah and I did our best to keep the scary details from the kids as best we could for as long as we could. Between surgeries, chemo, and radiation, this was a tough challenge. It was easy to see Taylor change as she witnessed her mom decline. We didn't know how to help her. We didn't even know how to help ourselves. We were overwhelmed and scared. And I have no doubt the kids, especially Taylor, could sense it. <clears throat> By the end of 2015, Sarah had taken a turn for the worse. Sarah was hospitalized and the kids were brought to the hospital to see her. Seeing her mom hooked machines and not being all there. <coughs> Scared. Scared Taylor terribly. It's almost like she hid within herself. She sat quietly in the waiting room without emotion and wouldn't talk. <coughs> when we realized that Sarah did not have much time left, <coughs> we gave the kids the opportunity to say goodbye. Taylor would not go back in the room. This was a source of serious guilt down the road. From that point forward, I did not get to see my happy, spunky daughter anymore. Taylor was distant and quiet. I rarely saw her cry, but instead, she internalized everything. Making and keeping friends was almost impossible for her. Her grades at school declined. She thought therapists took depression meds and anxiety meds. Nothing seemed to help. I would sometimes hear her let out a scream from the shower. I would knock on the door and ask if she was okay because I needed to know she was physically okay. But I knew that she was not okay emotionally and I, I didn't know how to help. Taylor began to hang with the new crowd at school that I as a parent did not approve of. She began to question who she was. She began to question her sexual orientation. Her clothes and makeup began to lean towards goth style. The only reason it wasn't full on goth is because I would rein her in. That's all I could do to hang on to what was left of my little girl. I agree. When, when Paula entered our lives, she began taking the kids to Eagle Brook. Taylor loved it because it was fun, but still avoided the idea of a relationship with God. When pa Paula finally convinced me to attend, I had an amazing transformation immediately. I felt like God was all around me. For the first time in my life, I experienced God communicating with me. Not verbally, but in my thoughts and through my heart. He was saying, I am the way. I knew at that point that this was the only way to save my family. This was the only way to save my little girl. We started attending Eagle Brook weekly. I began to pray and read my Bible. My faith and my relationship with God were growing so fast. I was trying to lead my family, just like I had heard in the messages. I started to see some changes in Taylor. I would peek down the row while we were singing, and I would see Taylor mouthing the words. She would participate in conversations about the message as we drove home. Unfortunately, Taylor still had so many struggles she was dealing with, and still questioned her faith. Then COVID hit, and our trip to Eagle Brook as a family came to an end. We continued to watch online, but it just wasn't the same, and I felt like all of us were taking a step back from God. Then came another moment when God spoke into my mind and my heart, and he put the idea of hosting a viewing party at Booth's Bar. 
It was there that God met us again. We were surrounded by friends and loved ones and worshiping with full hearts again. Our entire family grew in our faith and I began to see sparks of the old tailor starting to emerge. In the early part of 2021, our family made the decision to be baptized. Unfortunately, Taylor said she was not ready. I would be lying if I said that I wasn't sad and disappointed, but I respected her decision. I continued to pray for God to move in her and to lead her into a deeper relationship with him. Within a couple of months, I began to see it happening. Taylor began to talk about her faith to anyone. She began to smile more. The screams I used to hear from the shower were replaced by worship songs. Her choice in clothes and makeup started to change. Her guidance counselor at school commented about how amazed she was by Taylor's faith. She said she had never seen anyone that age so confident and open about their faith. Taylor's grades jumped to A's and B's. She was working at the bar and doing an amazing job. Customers would comment on how wonderful and friendly she was. She has become an amazing big sister to Grayson. God was certainly moving in her. Then two weeks ago, I was moved to tears when Taylor came to Paula and I and said that she had made up her mind to be baptized. There is no way to put into words the amount of love and gratitude I have for our amazing God. After talking with Taylor, she decided she wanted to be baptized by me. She decided to wait until Forgiven Church opens. Then we attended the baptism service at the Woodbury campus last Sunday at 4 p.m. We were telling some of the volunteers there about Taylor's decision and how unbelievably proud of her we were. The folks at Eagle Brook have always been amazing and they didn't disappoint today either. They said, why wait? Get it done today and your dad can even be a part of baptizing you. Of course, this was not planned, so we were not completely, so we were completely unprepared. <clears throat> but the Eagle Brook staff and volunteers were not. They provided us with everything we needed. God's hands were all over this too. As Taylor and I entered the water, I was so full of the Holy Spirit, I could almost feel it bubbling over. My heart was full as I lowered Taylor into the water and pulled her back up a new person, fully, made, <clears throat> fully committed to God. I could feel the tears welling up as she wrapped her arms around me and cried <clears throat> into my chest. We were lost. We were scared. I had no idea how to save my family. But God found us, and he saved us. Jesus died on the cross to save all of us. But it doesn't stop there. He continues to seek us and save us. He is the only truth. He is the only way. Christian-based household. My mom grew up Catholic and my dad Lutheran, but we never really went to church. Going to church on Easter or seeing my little cousins baptized was just about the limit of our church experience. It was never pushed on me at a young age to be close to Christ, and I really knew nothing about being a Christian. I knew there was a God, or at least I was told there was one. In 2011, when I was five years old, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. Being only five, I don't remember a lot back then, but I remember the pain and suffering my mom went through. And she always tried her best to hide it from me. She would try to smile and make sure she made happy memories with me as best she could. And when big challenges came, surgeries, big appointments, etc., she would tell me to pray for her and pray for our family. I really didn't understand why or what it meant by praying, but she would demonstrate and I would copy no real meaning behind the prayer, just a copy and paste of what I was told to do. If it was something really important to me, I would put a little more effort behind the prayer. But it was only a half-hearted attempt at praying. Then on December 6, 2015, my mom, my world, was suddenly gone. I don't remember a lot from the next few months. Pieces here and there would jump out. The day after she passed, I went to school like a normal day, only to be met with stares from my fifth grade class as they heard the news and teachers telling me that they were there for me, that I wasn't alone. 
Fifth grade year went by in a flash. Christmas didn't feel real. Mom's funeral, I laughed and played with friends instead of crying. The fifth grade graduation had fallen on my birthday, but I didn't want to celebrate that either. I had grown quiet and numb to the world around me. Despite what my teachers had told me, I felt completely and utterly alone. I had developed severe anxiety and depression over the time since my mom had passed. Pan attack, panic attacks and spurts of anger were common. I would sometimes be left alone in the house for 10 or 15 minutes, and I would just start screaming at this God, the God everyone was telling me was great and unconditionally loving, but the same God that took my mom, the one person I loved the most, away from me. In August of 2016, Paula had showed up in my family's lives. I had known Paula most of my life. Her daughter Lauren was not only my age, but had been one of my best friends since kindergarten. Paula would take me out on what we would call mommy-daughter dates. My dad wanted me to have a mother figure to look up to and to talk to. Paula decided one day she would take me to church, Eagle Brook. I was less than excited to go, but willingly went with her. When we got to the Woodbury campus and walked inside the building, I was speechless. The place was huge, and the stage was amazing. At one point, I had thought she tricked me and actually taken me to a concert or something. We went and found our seats, and when the band started playing, I was filled with this joy I hadn't felt in months. The lights were beautiful, and the music just seemed to reach my soul, even though I didn't understand what it was about. And then the sermon started. And let's just say that the joy that I felt before wasn't all there anymore. I was reminded I was at church still. I was confused. And every time God was mentioned, I would feel anger bubble up inside me. That anger, I would let out on Paula. I was angry at the world and the creator of it. And I threw all of that at the person trying to help me. To me, I felt Paula was trying to take away my dad and replace my mom. So I fought back, causing her more pain than she deserved. But she still pushed me forward to go to church to try to build a relationship with God. For years, she would pray for me to find God. And over those years, I would fall further and further away. I started to self-harm and develop insomnia, bouncing between the love God has for me and the hate I had for him. The loneliness and pain that I had felt had become enough. And a March 8th, 2021, I decided to end my own life. That afternoon, we had church at my dad's bar, booze bar and grill. Honestly, I don't even remember that what that sermon was about. But after the service, I stuck around to ride alone in the car with my dad. And I just blurted it out, how sad and lonely I was, what my plans that night were. And the next thing I know, I was in the emergency room with my dad by my side as doctors and psychiatrists asked me questions. I know that it was God that saved me that day. He spoke to me through the service. If God hadn't spoken to me, I doubt I would be here right now. But I, had, but I hadn't truly put my faith in God right then and there that day, but I knew something had changed. I still struggled for months after that, but my faith stayed stronger than it ever had. When my little brother Grayson was born, my life certainly changed for the better. That little boy has changed me in more ways than I can count, and I know God sent him down just for that reason. One day, it just finally clicked in my head. God loves me for who I am and will love me no matter what, and I started living by that. I don't have to find myself to be happy. I know I will still struggle. I am still struggling. That's okay. God already knows who I am, and he loves me because of it, and I will become that person through him. So on a spontaneous decision, I decided to be baptized on February 12, 2022, and finally just live through God. God is the only way. There's drugs.
drugs out there. There's all kinds of stuff, and some of it helps. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that if you need the extra help. But God is the way. So I implore you to find a relationship with God. Invite him into your heart tonight. Let the Holy Spirit fill you up as we take in the worship music and the message tonight from Jason. Lord God, thank you for all that you do, Lord. Thank you for blessing us with the Holy Spirit to fill our souls, Lord. Thank you for leading us and teaching us the way to live here on earth to make things easier for us, Lord. Thank you for conquering this earth for us, Lord. Thank you for suffering the way you did an innocent man so that us sinners can be saved. Lord, I just ask you to continue to guide us and pull us into a relationship with you. Lord, help us use Forgiven Church to reach more people for you, Lord, to bring more people to your salvation. Lord God, we love you with all of our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.